Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Here on the channel lately we've been doing lots and lots of camera reviews, but I wanted to take the time to get back to making some tutorials for you guys also. Now, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed by this, but after all this time, there's one really big obvious tutorial that I've been needing to make. This is a topic that basically comes up in every photo class. I always do a demonstration over this, and that is the difference between RAW and JPEG. Now, there is this really big misconception in photography that if you're a serious photographer, you must be shooting in RAW, and that's the first thing we have to clear up right now. Uh, there are certain types of photography where shooting in RAW may not be much of a benefit. For a lot of photographers, if you're doing something like, for example, studio work, where everything is all set up and controlled, you may be a you may be perfectly fine shooting in JPEG. Um, another area where you another type of photography where you may actually be better off with JPEGs would be if you're having to do any type of thing where you're having to deliver images very quickly. So let's say you're a sports photographer, you're having to shoot the game, and right at halftime you're having to deliver your images quickly. That could also be another case for shooting in JPEG. So do keep that in mind. Now, if you do wonder about JPEG versus RAW, you're thinking, well, okay, I know that some people shoot in RAW, I've heard it's better. Well, the area where RAW is going to be better is if we start thinking about doing more post-processing to our images. RAW files are typically 12, 14, or even 16 bits. JPEG files are eight bits. Now, I'm not gonna get into a whole bunch of technical jargon, but all that higher bit depth means is that the raw file is going to contain a lot more information. It will contain a lot more information about not only color, but also about tone. So if you want to tweak your exposure or your color, you're going to be able to do so more easily and get better results with a raw file versus a JPEG file. Now the next thing to keep in mind about raw is that if you shoot in raw, we really we basically don't give anyone raw files. Now there may be some special circumstances where you may, but generally speaking, we process our RAW files in software and then we export them in JPEG or some other more universal format to actually give to our clients because we, yeah, you basically can't deal, do anything with the RAW file unless you have uh, special software. Today we're going to be using Adobe Lightroom Classic, but you could also use something like Capture One. And of course there's many other RAW converters out on the market. Now, the other thing, the last thing we want to keep in mind about our RAW files is that they are proprietary. So every single camera manufacturer is going to have their own proprietary RAW format. Now, there is one universal RAW format out there, but most camera companies don't actually use it. So for the most part, you'll see companies using their own format. We're going to be looking at Sony files today. So these are going to be ARW files, but Canon, they use CR2 or CR3. Fuji, they use RAF. Nikon uses NEF. Uh, Pentax, uh, they just use a roll of film still. No, just kidding. Um, anyways, but all these camera companies, they have their own proprietary format. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at Lightroom Classic, and we'll kind of get into this. Now, this scene right here is basically the type of scene I just described, where we have pretty much a standard, sort of like, perfectly lit studio scene. Um, or at least as perfectly lit as it could be for the sake of this demonstration. So everything's shot under daylight balanced lights at low ISO. So we're not gonna really see a big difference between our RAW file and our JPEG. So let's just go in here and see. Okay, so here we are, we have a JPEG and we have a RAW. And aside from a slight change in color, we don't see much of a difference between both of these images. Uh, they are shot at the exact same settings. Now, the difference that we see here in color really comes down to the fact that the camera kind of finalizes the color in one way and Adobe Lightroom Classic is interpreting the color in the RAW file a little bit differently. But for the most part, everything looks very, very similar here. However, if we start looking at images that are not perfectly shot, we have a few over here. Wow, yes, things did not go right. Now again, if you're a studio photographer, you know, you're probably not going to be taking images, at least I hope. You're not gonna be taking images that look like this if everything is all set up. But if you're an event shooter, 
you might get that beautiful shot of the bride. Things may have been changing so rapidly that you couldn't get your exposure exactly dialed in. Now, obviously guys, you still wanna get your camera exposure and settings dialed in as perfectly as you can. Initially, we wanna get the best shot out of camera, but hey, you know, stuff happens, right? So if we were just dealing with our JPEG file here, which is going to be the next file here, you guys will notice that we actually don't have a whole lot we can do with this. I'll go in and kind of darken this down. I think this is around two stops overexposed or something like that. So we'll just bring it down by roughly minus two. And um, yeah, we darkened it, but it's not really looking that great. I mean, all the color information on our color checker has been compromised. And uh, we really, we've lost a lot of detail on this stapler. Let's see, if we bring down our highlights, see if I bring down the highlights, it's still really not changing. We, we basically have lost all the information there. If I were to zoom in, you can see there's some weird banding and posterization going on. There's basically nothing else we can get out of this file that's usable. However, if we go over to our raw file, so this is shot at the exact same settings and whatnot. Um, if we go in there and start to bring its exposure down again by around two stops, I'm not being super scientific. There we go. We can already tell that looks loads better. And uh, let's see if we were to bring down our highlights too. Yeah. So let's do a little side by side here. And again, I'm not trying to be super precise about this. I just want to give you guys a rough idea of things. But yeah, with a quick little adjustment here, there's a huge difference in how these files look, right? Yeah, it looks like the raw file was shot this way when we know that it really wasn't. Okay, so how else can we use this? Well, we could also think about this in terms of underexposure. So here we are again, we've got a JPEG file. This JPEG file is about two stops underexposed, somewhere thereabouts. So we could bring it up a little bit, one and two, roughly. And let's see, let's bring up our shadows a little bit here too. Okay, we'll bring them up about right there. So we can kind of get some good information out of this. Um, it is important to note that on any digital camera, it's always harder for a digital camera to record the brighter parts of the scene than the darker parts. So if you have no choice in most cases, I mean, if you have no choice, but you know, if you can't exactly nail your exposure, you're usually better off being a little bit darker versus being a bit brighter because it's easier to brighten than it is to darken. But you can notice that even brightening a file, if it's a JPEG, it's still not going to be exactly what we may hope for. We'll zoom in here a little bit more. Um, we're actually starting to see a little bit of, starting to see a little bit of weird things happening. There's some weird things happening in the shadows here, some blotchiness. Um, and over here, we've, we're starting to kind of get this color blotchy thing going on. That's a very technical term, color blotchy thing going on. <laughs> Let's do the same thing to our raw file here. We're going to go in, in here and raise it by about plus two, and then raise our shadows as well, just like we did. Okay, so about to the same spot. You know, I tell you what guys, my OCD won't let me do this. I'm going to just sync the file so that way they have the exact same exposure levels. There we go. So they've got the same adjustment applied. So let's go ahead and compare these two and zoom in. So yeah, much bigger difference here. Um, you can see that our raw file over here on the right, we don't see any of that weird color noise uh, and we don't see any of the blotchiness over in this area either. It's just looking much better. I'm not gonna dwell on this too long. Let's go ahead and Let's just push these shadows really far, just, just for the sake of example. Again, this is not the sort of thing that we would, you know, do to our files on the, uh, on the daily or anything, but this is just for the sake of demonstrational purposes. Okay, so I've kind of got this file shuffled up, but yeah, our raw files on the left, JPEGs on the right. But yeah, we're seeing a lot more of that color noise coming out here but we don't see nearly as much of that happening with our raw file. So that's what's happening there. 
So yeah, we've got a lot more flexibility even with an underexposed image too. One other thing I want to show you guys on this is if we start thinking about images that are shot at a very, very high ISO. So for example here, we have two images taken at 12,800 ISO. And by the way, I could have done this test using a much higher end camera, uh, a much higher end current camera, but I want to prove the point that even if we're using an older camera, we can still get much better results out of the raw files. So these files are from a Sony a6500, which is like, I think it's like five or six years old at this point. And, um, and it was not a high end camera when it was, you know, brand new back in the day. And we're still able to get much better results out of the raw files. So looking at this high ISO, this is going to be our JPEG shot here and our shot here is going to be our raw. So let's go ahead and put these side by side. Okay, so JPEG and RAW. You guys can see that these are both at 12,800 ISO. The main thing that we noticed here is that we do see more noise out of our RAW file, but we also see more detail. So if we go in and look at these little leather bits uh, on this, on this uh, vintage camera here, you guys can see that you can basically pick up more of the texture. Um, and we're also picking up a bit more fine detail in some of these areas on our color checker. So basically, we have more control over the noise reduction level in our file. Now, we could go into the camera menu and we could turn off the noise reduction. We could set it to low. On most cameras, honestly, even on low or off, you really don't fully turn it off. So if you have this raw file, you're able to make more of a conscious choice about how much noise you want to see in your image versus how much detail you want to see. Uh, Lightroom's noise reduction is pretty decent, but we could even run this raw file through software that's even better uh, than Lightroom at doing noise reduction and have even more flexibility. So again, we've got more flexibility with our raw file. Uh, but yeah, if I were to go in here to Lightroom, I could go down here to our noise reduction. I could play with this luminance slider and I could, I could actually make it look like a watercolor like the out of camera JPEG does but I could also kind of try to find a better balance between noise reduction and detail. So again, we've got more flexibility here as well. So yeah, these are just kind of, this is just kind of a little example of some of the things that we could do with a raw file versus a JPEG. Now, one final thing I want to tell you guys is that we still want to get things as right in camera as we can. And I mentioned that earlier, I'm going to mention it again, because there are certain times when even if we have a raw file, we can't really get all the information. We can't really get things looking exactly the way we want them to. Um, I'll show you guys a couple more things here momentarily. So if we think about uh, things in regards to color, the raw file is going to contain more color information as well. So we have a JPEG here, we have a raw file here. Both of these have a very obvious color cast. Now, if we go over to our JPEG file and go over to our white balance setting, you'll notice that if I click the drop down, it says Edge Shot, Auto, and Custom, and those are our only choices. And we also have our eyedropper here that we could use on a neutral target, which we have a neutral white balance portion of this color checker here that we could use. If we go over to our raw file, it's going to be a little bit different. When we click the white balance and go to edge shot, you can see we have some more options. We have auto, daylight, cloudy. Um, basically, we have the same options that we have on the camera. So we can go in here and we can change these white balance settings as if we were changing that setting on the camera before taking our shot. Now, if you guys are curious about white balance, if you have questions about that, I do have a white balance video. I would highly recommend watching it if you have white balance questions. I will go ahead and put a link to it as well in the description and in the cards. Okay, so let's see about fixing this white balance. If I go over here to the JPEG, I'm actually just going to play with the sliders a bit. Okay, so if I play here, I'll just kind of subtract some of the yellow and go towards blue. And you guys can see we can kind of get there, but it's looking, it's still looking a bit weird, honestly. I could come down to this one as well. 
Anyways, point proven. You guys see how I can get rid of a lot of that yellow, but it's still going to be, well, it's still going to be kind of tinted in a weird way. If I come over to the raw file, again, we have more information to work with. And so that translates over to color information as well. So if we give this, uh, the sliders an adjustment here, we'll go over towards the cooler end of the scale here and look at that. Already, same adjustment, it looks loads better, right? Little side-by-side -side comparison. Anyways, I'm not going to hold you guys a long time. You guys get the general idea of this. I mean, it's, it's amazing what can be done. You can see how much more color integrity is being held onto in our raw file versus our JPEG when we make this adjustment. Now, I did just mention that it's best to get it as right in camera as possible. I'm going to still show you guys why. Of course, we're talking about raw versus JPEG, so I do want you guys to know that the raw file gives you a lot more flexibility. So again, if you're an event shooter, especially a sports shooter, you may not be able to get things dialed in just perfectly. Uh, right when you're taking your shot, but this raw file can really, really make a difference in, in how you can adjust your final image. We've got another image here that's also shot on a very, very odd white balance that's not correct. So again, we could go in here, we can adjust this, you know, we can see we can get this looking right. If we go over to our JPEG, you can see that we can basically fail again. <laughs> it does not work out great uh, whatsoever. Sometimes if the white balance is this messed up, the way that you fix the image is you go like this. <laughs> um, but with the raw file, we have the ability to really go in here and get back that information and really, really get things looking proper. So if we look at this last example here, you guys will notice that we actually have a couple of different colors of light in our scene. This is the type of situation where we really want to get it as right in the camera as possible because there's not really an easy way to be able to fix uh, this scene with two different colors of light. We can go in here and adjust our white balance and the raw file does permit that with all the extra data we have to work with. But notice that if I go in and adjust the color temperature to where everything on the cooler side of the picture looks, uh, well, rather everything on the warmer side of the picture looks correct. Everything on the cooler side of the picture is looking too blue. And if I go in and adjust to where the left side of the image is looking right, then everything on the right side is looking too warm. So we can't really easily deal with this type of situation. Now we could go in and get fancy with some masks and do some other things, but this is definitely the type of situation where even though this raw file is very powerful, we would still want to get this type of shot as right in the camera as possible. We'd want to either eliminate one of these different light sources, or we may even use some more advanced techniques to be able to deal with this type of situation. But uh, do keep in mind that the raw files are still very powerful. I hope you guys get a much better idea of what you can do with raw versus JPEG. Definitely write me in the, com in, the, in the comment section if you guys have questions. I always like to read all of your feedback and that's how we end up making even more tutorials. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I am known as Photog J the Great. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.